Hey guys, welcome to Stuffbox. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own VPN on Google Cloud Platform using the open source protocol called OpenVPN. With OpenVPN, they provide you two free VPN subscriptions, and the only thing you need to pay is the Google Cloud server. I'll show you how to configure this on GCP, and I'll also show you how to create a billing alert so you can create notifications before you go over a certain budget. I'll also show you how to set up your Mac to use OpenVPN, as well as create another user if you want to share the cost with someone else. If you're new here, please subscribe to this channel if you want to learn more Google and Apple tutorials. Let's begin. So log into your Google Cloud Console and go to the top left, which is the menu, and then select Marketplace. And then a search bar, type OpenVPN. Then select OpenVPN Access Server, which is the first one. I want to quickly talk about pricing. To run this on Google Cloud Platform, this will cost you about $17 Canadian or about $14 US per month. This gives you two VPN connections at the same time. If you need more, go to openvpn.net and purchase more licenses. The cost is also based on 30 day, 24 hours per day usage. So if you don't use this for 24 hours straight, then the cost would end up being cheaper. Now the next thing we want to do is click launch. Let's configure our server under deployment name, name it to whatever you want. For zones, pick the zones that's closest to your location. But since we are setting up a VPN, choose a zone where you want to appear that you're physically located. Like in my case, I'm in Canada. I'm going to pick US East A, which is located in Northern Virginia. For machine type, we're going to leave it as small micro. That way our cost is $15 per month. For boot disk, let's leave that at 10 gigs. And then for networking, we can set this as static or leave it as ephemeral. I can't seem to set this as static right now, but I'll show you how to set up a static IP later on. Keep in mind though, that if you do set up a static IP, your cost will go up from a dollar to $3 more. Then if you scroll down, leave everything else checked and then hit deploy. Our OpenVPN is now set up. Now the first thing we want to do is log into our admin portal. Copy the admin password over here. And then click the admin URL. And it will give you a typical redirect notice. We're fine with that. Click that URL. And since we don't have an SSL certificate yet on this IP, it gives you a potential security risk warning. Log into the admin portal. The username is OpenVPN. And then paste the password that we copied and then click sign in. Read the license agreement and then click agree. Now that our service is running, click configuration on the left menu and then look for VPN settings. And then on this page, you wanna check if should internet traffic be routed through the VPN. Just make sure that's clicked yes. Otherwise your VPN is actually not working. And then click save settings. After you click Save Settings, you have to click Update Running Server. Now the next thing I want to show you is updating our admin password. Under User Management, there's a User Permission. Over here, if you click More Settings, there's a local password field over here. Even if you replace the password here and click Save Settings, the updated password will actually not work. So to update that, let's go to our Google Cloud Console and then SSH to our VM instance. We're still over here, so click SSH. I'm just gonna type the clear command, so it puts the prompt all the way on the top. So let's set up the root password first. Type in sudo passwd root. Enter the password for root. It won't show up, just type it and retype it again. Root is now set up. Now let's log in as root. Type in su space root. Enter the password. And we're logged in as root. Now the next we want to do is change the password for OpenVPN. Type passwd and then OpenVPN. Enter the password you want for OpenVPN admin. Just ensure that your password is secure and at least 16 characters long and not password123. So now our admin is now set. We can get out from here, type in exit, exit again, and that closes that window. Since we're here, let's set up the static IP for our OpenVPN. 
click the menu and then scroll all the way down and look for networking and then you should see VPC network and then select external IP addresses. Select your open VPN VM instance. Under type, you should see ephemeral. Click that and then select static. Name this open VPN, put a description if you want and then click reserve. Since we're also here, let's set up the billing. Go to the top left menu and then look for billing. What we're going to do is create email notification when we get charged at a certain point. This way we know how much we are getting billed and we can modify or shut down the server if we have to. So on the left menu, look for budgets and alerts. We don't have any budget right now, let's create a budget. Enter a name. I'm going to name it OpenVPN Budget. And then for project, select the project. We only have one, so it automatically selected for us. For services, select the OpenVPN service. We can pick it over here or simply type it on a search field. Since I still have credit for my free trial, I can include that to my notification. If you only care about getting charged on your credit card, then uncheck these boxes. Then click next. For budget type, select specified amount. And then for target amount, I'm gonna set this to $3, but you can set it to whatever you're comfortable with in terms of cost. And then click next. This automatically gave us three thresholds. It gave us 50, 90, and 100%. It will email us whenever it reaches 50, 90, or 100. You can also add another threshold if it increased to 200%, because it doesn't email you anymore once you pass 100%. Once you're finished with that, click finish. Now let's go back to our VM instance, click on the menu, and then go to Deployment Manager. Click on the Deployment. This time we want to log into our site address, which is the first link. And then you'll get a redirect notice, like the other one. Click that. And you'll also get the potential security risk because we don't have an SSL for that one. Before we log into our client, let's go to our admin portal and see if the password works. So I'm going to log out from here, from my previous session. Log in with OpenVPN and the new password. And that work? Okay, great. Now we can try it on the client. And the admin password. Now it gives you all the OpenVPN platforms that you can download for your device. You can use Windows, Linux, and Mac as well as for mobile apps. We're on the Macintosh, so we're gonna try the Mac application. So download this and then install it. I'm gonna go through the whole installation. It should be pretty quick and it's pretty straightforward. There's really no trick to it. It's just like any other Mac application that you're installing. Since you've gone this far in this video, could you help me out and click the thumbs up button if you haven't yet? This helps my video gets viewed by more people. Now that's installed, we can use it now. Let's go to the application folder and open OpenVPN Connect. Then it shows you the onboarding tour. I'm going to allow the notification there and then click next on this one. And then agree on the terms and condition. Then it gives you the settings update The MD5 is not secure. And now we're ready to connect. Now it gives you your OpenVPN profile and all you have to do is click the toggle over here. Log in with our username and password. And we are now connected. Let's go to our web browser and open a new tab. Let's type in what is my IP to see if our IP has changed. It doesn't seem to be loading. If you experience the same issue that I'm having, open terminal on our Mac and type ping space www.google.com. This doesn't seem to be loading as well. Press Command C on your keyboard to cancel that ping. Go to your system preferences on your Mac. Click on network. Select your Wi-Fi or whichever one's connected and then click advanced button. Then click the DNS tab. And for DNS server, let's add the IP address of our OpenVPN as one of the DNS server. So I'm gonna click plus, put the IP address there and then hit okay. And then hit apply.
And now let's test that again by going to terminal and pinging google.com. It doesn't seem to be working, so let's cancel that by pressing Command C. Now let's go back to our system preferences and network again and then click advance. Go back to the DNS and then remove the DNS that we put. Select the IP address and then hit the minus button. And then click OK and then apply it. If we go to our terminal, hit the ping again, and we can see that it's now pinging Google. If we go back to our web browser and check what is my IP, it should give us our VPN IP address. And our previous search automatically loaded and it gave us our IP address. Now to see how many connections you have on your VPN, go to your OpenVPN admin portal, refresh that page, and it should give us our current active user. When you're not connecting to VPN, I highly suggest that you disconnect it. This way you're not accumulating any charges. So once you disconnect on the client, you also want to disconnect from the admin portal. And to start it back up, it's simple as clicking start VPN services. Now, if you want to add more users on your VPN, since you have two licenses, go to your admin portal, click user management on the left, and then click user permission, which you've seen this earlier. You can add a new user over here, simply type the username, and then click more settings, and then add your password over here. You can modify a few settings here, like allow password change from client web server, enable password strength check as well. Everything else you wanna leave the way it is, and then scroll down and save settings. And after that, click Update Running Server. For more Google Cloud Platform tutorials, click this link here and leave a thanks below if you find this video helpful. Thank you for watching.